so according to requirement document what is that we are supposed to do if there is exception at any point of the time we are supposed to read the error message and click on okay on that pop up so after clicking on submit when you are trying to create the order if you don't enter any values into the text boxes like uh, product code unit price customer account number so if you are missing some data in them and we try to create the order obviously it is going to throw an error so if you see here you can notice that here see so after clicking on submit we may come across this order validation error if we are if we don't have if any of the record is missing any of the value so let's say if we are missing product code or quantity or unit price or customer account number we are going to get this pop up now what are we supposed to do according to the requirement we are supposed to read the error message and click ok and go ahead mark the record as exception in the queue we are supposed to mark the record as exception in the queue and then mark the record as exception in queue where where are we supposed to mark the record as exception in queue yes or no in the queue we are supposed to mark this specific record as exception after marking it as exception then we will proceed with the remaining records okay proceed with step 3 comma 4 comma 5 okay so that is what we are going to repeat for all the records right once you read the reference number we are going to repeat the same steps for all the records similarly whenever you come across any exception we are supposed to read the message here and then mark the record as exception in the queue and then proceed with step 3 4 5 again for the remaining records clear according to the requirement this is what we are supposed to do and uh, to implement this to implement this we have done some changes to our object coming to the object studio what we have done here we have captured this pop-up order validation error pop-up and we are waiting for the order validation error pop-up in the wait stage after clicking on submit after clicking on submit we have a wait stage inside the wait stage we have defined two conditions one is for order confirmation and one is for order validation error so if if we are able to create the order we will go ahead and read the reference number else we are going to read the error message after reading the error message we are going to click on button ok and then we are now Am I audible now? Is it clear now? Am I audible? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So coming here. So where? Okay. So what are we doing here? So if we are able to create the order properly, we will be reading the reference number. Else we are supposed to read the error message if there is any error. So and uh, after reading the error message what are we supposed to do that's what i'm trying to explain here as per the application functionality we are supposed to navigate back to the order menu page so that we will be choose the option number we'll be able to choose the option number and we'll be able to create the order here okay so if you observe here order page order menu page we go to the order menu page choose option one and here product code we enter the product code choose the quantity assume we have left the 
the unit price value empty now click on submit you can see here unit price is not a valid number yes so when you whenever we come across this scenario what are we doing here is we are trying to read this error message what are the pop-up we have this error message we are trying to read the error message for reading the error message what we have done we have captured this element remember we have captured this element yes or no in winter to spy more we capture this element we are using that element to read the message and we're storing the message in this validation error message data item okay and then we are clicking on button okay after that after clicking on button okay what is happening after clicking on button okay ideally we are supposed to i mean we will go ahead and mark the code as exception that is fine and then what we do we are supposed to repeat with the steps which steps we are supposed to repeat with step three four five okay so if you go to the step three what is your step three actually your step three is choosing the option here yes or no this is your step three this is your step three and what are you performing in step three you are supposed to choose the option here so if you want to choose the option are you in the right screen to choose the option in the application after clicking okay are we in the right screen no so for that reason we are supposed to click on orders here we are supposed to click on orders button so that is the reason here in the object what we have done we are clicking on orders by utilizing a static weight okay i also explained why we are utilizing this static weight here i also explained you why we are using this static weight here okay and then we are going to set the exception flag because we don't want to throw the business exception from the object level we are passing the exception to the process level and in the process we are planning to check if this flag is true or false so here i have created a data item business exception flag the initial value of that is going to be false whenever after clicking on submit whenever our path is coming to get error message and this path if, if it is going to take this path whenever we come across any error then this exception flag this business exception flag will be set to true here and those values we are sending it to the process studio through output what are all the mis uh, values we are sending it we are sending validation error message and business exception flag these two values we are sending as output from the object level to the process studio now coming back to the process studio in this process studio if you see here while creating the new order we are getting two outputs here sorry not this one i'm sorry action stage enter order details and submit after submitting we are getting two more outputs here previously we used to get only reference number now since we are handling the exceptions from here we are supposed to get the exception message if there is any exception if it is a business exception this is this will be set to true okay now if you see here based on that i'm going to check if there is any exception or not if there is exception we is going to throw a new exception here it is going to throw a new exception here so what is it going to throw business exception and message is the same message which we are getting in the object level that message the uh, the message which we are going to read which we are going to read here in the order validation pop-up we will read this message right this message only i am getting it from the object level to the process studio and here i am going to handle it okay now let us run the flow and see how this is going to work okay and what I have done in the main page we are supposed to handle the exception in the main page okay while handling the exception in the main page what are we supposed to do in the main page whatever the main action is there what is our main action here creating new order is the main action so this is the action which needs to be handled so i have taken a recovery mode in the main page i have taken a recovery mode in the main page i am capturing the exception i am catching the exception whichever is thrown from this create new order sub page okay whatever any it can be any exception whichever is thrown from that i'm going to catch it and then i'm going to recover that get the details resume the flow 
and then mark the item as exception in the queue. In the queue, as per the requirement, if we come across any error, we are supposed to mark that record as exception. Yes, sir. We are supposed to mark that record as exception inside the queue as per the requirement. So for that reason, we are going to mark the record as exception. And how are we going to mark uh, the record as exception inside the queue? We are supposed to use mark exception action in the internal business object queue. And what will be the input here? What will be the input here? Item ID. Item ID will be your input which item you are supposed to mark it as exception and what is the reason okay now let us go ahead and implement this step by step let us run this and see how it is going to work out okay let me close the object first anyway during runtime we are going to open the object control room let us see if you have any pending records here i will clear the data so what is the queue name which you are using in this centrix data solution queue i guess yes this is the one select all records let me clear the queue first i don't want to have any empty records here select all section i'm just clearing that in real time you are not supposed to do it like this okay once the data is loaded into the queue don't delete the data from the queue in real time okay in real time whenever you get into the project right you don't do that okay you are not supposed to do it once you load the data into the queue you need to process everything only in dev environment you should do that in dev environment if you want to delete the records from the queue you can delete it in testing and production don't do that okay and uh, come here so let us go to the excel file first of all go to the excel file okay if you see here there are some records okay let me remove unit price for this record so second record doesn't have unit price and uh, 14th record doesn't have product code let us remove customer account number for sixth record okay assume that we have some empty records over here and let us for one record let us remove the quantity also okay some records are missing some values here okay now let us save this now save the excel file so total how many records we have total 20 records out of which some four or five records doesn't have some values one record doesn't have unit price one record doesn't have the customer account number one record doesn't have product code one record doesn't have quantity okay now let us save the file close this and uh, let us load the data to the queue and proceed for the let me run it step by step so that you will be able to see how it is going to work so first we are going to get the pending out in the pending count from the queue so if we have pending items we are not going to add new data to the queue so since we don't have any pending items in the queue now we are going to get the data from the excel file and load that data into the queue So it has to create this uh, reference number, right? So no, I, I'm not doing anything. It is taking some time to uh, create the instance. Is it visible now? It created the instance. It got the data. And here is the product data collection okay i mean basically i did not do anything it took some time to create the instance okay my machine is a bit slow don't mind so when we go to the current values are you able to see the screen now are you able to see the collection i have opened the collection product data you can see the second record 
we are missing unit price for second record we are missing customer account number for a record so likewise we are missing some data for some records okay now click okay here and we are now going to load the data into the queue we are now going to load the data into the queue okay so once the data is loaded now let us see if we have the data inside the queue refresh the queue yes we got the data inside the queue since one of the record is missing this customer account number right you can see that value is missing here also because we have defined this under key field yes or no when we created this queue we defined it under key field so if you are missing the value there it will miss here also you need to remember everything every concept is dependent here they are not independent concepts whatever we are discussing previously that will affect our current flow okay so what are the change you do it is going to affect it okay now we are going to start the application continue with the first record and let us see what will happen with the second record so let me put a breakpoint over here and let me start the flow i'm going to run this it is now launch and logging into the application now you can see for the first record it is going to create the order and mark that record as completed so we came to get next item now let us get the first record from the queue you can see item data collection is now having the data you can see the first record we have proper values for all the uh, fields product code enterprise quantity priority order everything is proper here now if i continue it is going to create the order and mark the first record as completed it's going to read the reference number now you can see here in this page if you remember it created the reference number it read the reference number and for that reason since we are able to create it successfully you can see the business flag business exception flag is set to false here yes or no from the object we got the business exception flag as false and for that reason it has taken the end path came back to the main page and here we are able to mark the first record as completed come to the queue and see if your first record is in completed status yes the first record is in completed status now let us proceed with the second record let us proceed with the second record so while executing second record i'm going to do it step by step i'm going to do it step by step okay get next item so we got the item from the queue and you can see the item data collection we are missing unit price over here right now we are going to create new order step in okay now first thing is we are going to choose the option here so after choosing the option what are we supposed to do we are supposed to create the order here now step in we are stepping into the object level We have stepped into the object level now see what is going to happen in the object step over we are in the right screen we are activating that now we are going to enter product code unit price customer account number but whereas if you see in the collection input data collection here we are missing value in the product i mean sorry unit price column we don't have value for unit price proceed it is successfully able to select the quantity okay it is going to check the priority order now it is going to click on button submit so after clicking on button submit what happened here we got a pop-up here which pop-up we have got did we get the reference number since we don't have unit price value it is saying unit price is not a valid number okay now we got an error so what are we going to do so for that reason only i have captured this pop-up i have captured this pop-up here 
and if you see here what are we trying to do we are trying to check if we have got order confirmation pop-up or validation error pop-up in the wait stage so since it is validation error pop-up it will directly go to the second condition is going to now read the message from that read the message now it is going to click on button ok see the flow also okay after clicking on button okay it is going to wait for two seconds and it will click on button orders now you can see it came back to button orders i mean or we are, we are back to orders menu page now since we have got the error message we have read the error message and clicked on button ok we navigated back we made the application ready for the second record next record i mean to say the third record the application is now ready for the third record since we have got error for the second record what are we supposed to do now i am setting the flag here as true the business exception flag initially it is false now when i execute this you can see the business exception flag is true here see the screen business exception flag is true here now we are going to end stage discard yeah now we are back to the process studio now you can see here we got the business exception flag as true and you can see error message we have read the error message there right from the application unit price is not a valid number now we got the message and business exception flag here now what are we trying to do after creating the order we are going to check if there is exception or not if there is no exception it will end and it will continue with the next record if there is exception it is going to throw the exception from here see when it is going to throw the exception here it's going to throw the exception here automatically that will be recovered by the that will be caught by the recovery mode it has been caught by the recovery mode here yes or no where was the exception we are throwing the exception here and since we are referring this create new order in the main page now and i am using a block stage here so if there is any exception at this particular stage re this recovery mode is going to handle that now it is able to read that yes or no now continue now we are going to get exception type and exception detail here okay read the error messages now we are going to mark the record as expression before marking the record as exception let us see what is the status of the record what will be the status of the record status of the record will be in locked state now you are going to mark that record as exception here once you mark the record as exception come back to the queue refresh the queue and see you can see it has been set to which exception business exception and what is the message what is the message in the business exception unit price is not a valid number okay now come back here and see what is happening in the exception date column you can see the exception date when it has been occurred and you can see the exception reason what is the type of the exception we have got type of the exception is business exception and what is the error message unit price is not a valid number okay this is how we are going to mark the record as exception even whenever we come across any exception now we have automated our solution right completely now if you continue now if you continue here it will go ahead and get the next item from the queue now it is going to get the next item from the queue okay so now we are going to get the next item from the queue and now we are going to continue with the main record so you see here check the item now we are going to check if item is available or not okay everyone understood how we are marking the record as the exception in the work queue so that is the purpose we are using queues and exception handling okay so if you are not marking the record as exception if you are not handling the exceptions here what is going to happen it is going to terminate the process we are supposed to run it from the control room right if you are not going to handle the exceptions what is going to happen it will terminate the process will get terminated 
for that reason we are supposed to handle the exception mark those records which are invalid as exception in the queue with a proper reason okay now we are going to execute the next record so likewise let me continue i'll continue the flow for all the records okay you can see it will automatically handles the exception for each and every record here if there is any exception else it will not handle the record so this is the third record for third record we are successfully able to create the order now it is going to get the fourth record now going to get the next record for so after fourth record we are going to execute fifth record I think in middle one record has been moved to exception. If I am not wrong, we have removed customer account number for one of the record, right? If I am not wrong, uh, reset. Yes. So here, yeah, this record where we don't have the customer account number, you can see that is marked to exception here. Please ensure all fields are completed. See this? See, we got this error message pop up, right? It is able to read that error message and mark that record as exception here yes sir no? likewise when we continue whichever record doesn't have the values those records will be moved to exception here okay now let me remove the breakpoint and let me continue the flow and you can see all of them will be handled here okay i'm going to click on continue for one record we haven't mentioned the uh, quantity also so let me run it slowly you can see the flow how it is happening oh my god this is going to take a lot of time I think for the last mark on record, I guess, right? We don't have this quantity value. Come back to queue and see how many records are completed. We still have so many records. Okay, let me run it fastly. So it is going to take so much time. So each record, run it in the full speed. A bit fast. At least. Observe the data, what it is entering. If you find like anywhere any data is missing, right? Try to notice that error pop up will come immediately. Order confirmation reference number will take some time to get the reference number. See here, if we are missing any data here, no data is missing for this record also. So we'll get the order confirmation reference number. So this record is also marked to completed. Continue with the next record. See if there is any data missing here. No data is missing. Yes, it is now able to create the order for this record also. Now proceed with the next record. This record also doesn't have any error. So since we are using proper wait stages, right? Even though our application is slow and uh, we're trying to execute the next stages, it will wait for the application to load, okay? You see here, it is taking some time to load the page and still 
see here we have got the exception please ensure all the fields are available so for that reason it came to so here for this record the current record so we got the business exception which is set to true it has thrown the exception here came back to the main page and recovery mode is able to catch that exception and marking that record as exception in the queue now let us see how many records we should have with the exception two or three there should be three records with the exception let us see if we have three records one two and three okay let us come back to this continue so hope you are able to understand how we are handling the exceptions here so practice guys you need to practice a lot if you want to understand the flow how to design it and all you need to practice a lot okay This record also successfully created. And let us see if we have any missing data for this record. We have extracted a new record from queue. No missing data over here. Let us continue. So we will come across a record where we don't have quantity value. So let us see how that is being handled. You can see the error is getting bubbled up to the sub pages and from the sub pages it is bubbling up to the main page we are using exception bubbling concept we are using um, recovery mode concept we are throwing the exceptions here we are throwing user dependent exception also here so for this record quantity it has thrown the exception here if you observe this it has thrown the exception here and we are getting that message here and you can see the record is marked as exception and see the message also not able to select the quantity value not able to select the quantity value okay this is the user defined message which we have defined in the object level we are throwing this as a business exception so two ways of handling the business exception one is pass it through the flag set the flag and take the i mean throw the business exception in the process level itself and throw the business exception from the directly object level itself in this scenario we are throwing the exception from the object level whereas in the previous scenarios we are throwing the exception in the object level sorry process level okay Oh, we did not navigate back to these orders. Okay, I think I have disturbed the flow. So that is the reason, guys. We should not disturb the flow. Since I have disturbed the flow, it clicked on somewhere else and did not navigate back to the orders page. For that reason, it waited here. Let's continue with the remaining records. So here also it ran into error. Now this record also will be marked as exception here. Come back to the queue, refresh the queue and see. Yes, we are able to complete all the records, process all the records, yes or no? Okay, now, now let us compare the records. Go to the Excel file, go to the Excel file. Let us see if those records which, which are missing values are moved to exception or not. So, which account number doesn't contain unit price here? You can see this customer account number 584-6516. So check if this account number 
in the queue 5846516 you can see this what happened to this account number it is marked as exception and what is the reason unit price is not a valid number since unit price value is empty it is not a valid number understood similarly for this record we don't have customer account number and that is the reason that specific record is moved to exception and message is please ensure all fields are completed so we are supposed to make sure that all the fields are filled in or not if you are not going to fill in the fields it is going to throw an exception okay so this is how we do the exception handling now you have seen how we are setting a record as exception inside the queue any questions so far Okay. All good, right? So what happens if the two records are missing in the Excel file? Yeah, if two records are missing in the Excel file also, we'll get the same error, right? Let's say for example, that should be in the application level. So let's say if you don't fill two records, assume which two records, let's say, I don't have quantity and I don't have unit price. Both of them are missing both of them. Then you submit unit price is not a valid number. So because in order, first it comes, first it will verify if unit price is available or not. Then it will go ahead and verify if quantity is available or not. So let's say if you don't fill product code also, submit unit price is not a valid number. Now remove customer account number also and try to submit unit price is not a valid number. Okay. So basically go back. So first we remove unit price, right? We'll start throwing the same exception based on the application functionality. If two fields are missing, it will throw the error related to that. So let's say you fill the unit price. Order quantity is not a valid number. Now I corrected order quantity also. Please ensure all fields are completed. So which are all the other fields available? Product code and customer account number, like this. So if you are missing unit price, first it will throw unit price because unit price is mandatory. Quantity also mandatory and uh, customer account number and product code is also mandatory. Without these four records, we won't be able to create the order. If any of them are missing, we'll get the error message accordingly and that will be handled accordingly. So you can run it. You can, you can make a couple of records here without two record, two values also. Obviously, whatever the error message it is going to throw, it will handle it. Even if you leave the empty record also here, it will handle it. See, priority order is missing default. By default, it will take false only. By default, since we have mentioned it as flag data type, by default, it will take false and it will simply say no value available. Then what is going to happen? It will simply leave it. It will not going to check the priority order there and it will try to submit the order. How do you handle the uh, flag? So in this scenario, what you can do, you can check if the value is available or not in that. If you want to check if there is value inside that, how are you going to do that? If you want to check if there is value in a specific field, yes or no, how are you going to do that? Take a decision stage, okay? Pass the data item and check if there is, if it is equal to null or not, or not equal to null or not. Understood what I'm trying to say? If you want to handle that scenario, try to check if it is not equal to null or not. Are you able to get the point? Whoever asked me that question, how are you going to handle flag errors? See, 
it is not flag error okay it is not flag error sam first point it is not a flag error it is error with the data this is the data okay this is the data if there is no data inside this what is going to happen it won't be able to select the checkbox over there yes or no it won't be able to take the decision over there clear yes it is the data you are dealing with not it is a flag items or whatever it may be okay it is what you are dealing with is data you need to check if there is data or not if there is data then you do so and so if there is no data what is going to happen that is what we are supposed to identify here okay is it clear sam did i answer your questions okay so what you do if you want to do something like that what are we doing here so let's say for example item id i'm trying to check if item id is available or not how am i checking it same way you can go ahead and check for uh, input data dot uh, what is what is a priority order is not equal to null which means does it have some value if there is some value go ahead and select it go ahead and check if it is true or false hope you are able to understand right so you go to the object studio you go to the object studio come to this uh, enter detail order details and submit enter order details and submit okay and in here you see we have this uh, decision box where you are trying to check if the priority order is true or false okay now before that what you can do you can take another decision stage you can link another decision stage before you go ahead and validate if it is true or false you try to check first there is some data or not you try to check if there is data or not if there is data proceed if there is no data then throw the exception directly from here got my point what i'm trying to say so what you do you come here you say simply go to the collection input data dot priority order check if it is not equal to null check if it is not equal to null this is what you have to think logically okay so if it is not equal to null you'll go ahead and check if it is true or false if it is true what you want to do do it if it is false what you want to do you do it okay now directly from select quantity i will connect to this stage now if it is false what i will do if it is false i will throw an exception from here directly I will throw an exception from here directly. Open this, throw business exception, define the message, telling that uh, priority order field is empty for this record. Do something like that. So once you throw the exception, what will happen? you throw the exception in the object level you throw the exception in the object level it will come up to the process sub page here and from here it will be going to the main page and it will be handled here understood a simple change will facilitate you for validating your priority order also as per the requirement we have to define our flow okay RPA is nothing but rule based automation. You need to follow certain rules over here. Is that clear, Sam? Are we handling it now? This is how we are supposed to handle it. Anyone else have any other questions? Okay, take a break and come back by 11.35. We'll continue from 11.35, okay? I want everyone to be back by 11.35. Next, we are going to stepping into a new concept. Thank you.
This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Good question, Sam. So here is the question from Sam. So that's what I'm about to say right now. <laughs> okay, so let me share my screen. So go to your chat box and take a look at the question which was uh, asked by Sam. Sir, after completion, when you update the Excel file, what will happen to the records which are in error state? That is his question. So now we have completed all the records here, yes or no? So let us come back to our process studio. Close this object, okay? And discard the changes. No, no changes we have made. So I'm discarding the changes here. Now we completed all the records, right? Now we completed all the records and see our final collection. Where is our final collection? A reference data collection, right? And in this reference data collection, did you observe this? How many records we have in this reference data collection? How many records we have in this reference data collection? Only 15 records and we have processed everything here, right? We have processed everything here. We processed all the records in the queue. And how many are in exception state? How many records are in exception? Let me sort this. So that you can see all the exception records at one point. One, two, three, four, five. Out of 20 records, we have only 15 processed records in this collection. What happened to the remaining five records? What those remaining five records have been moved to exception, but we also need to inform our inform our user what happened to the remaining five records. We also need to inform that, right? It is our responsibility to inform what happened to these records in the queue. Yes or no? Okay, so while completing the record, while we are completing the, uh, I mean, while we are marking the record as then completed, what are we doing here? We are setting the data to the reference number collection, right? Yes or no? Similarly, here also, we are supposed to use these two stages here. While marking the record as exception, before marking the record as exception, you set those records into this queue. So the flow is getting changed here, yes or no? If you see here, if there is no exception only, then it will come here and it will continue here, yes or no? If there is an exception, what is going to happen? It will directly take this path. It will directly take this path, right? So let me reset this. Let me reset the flow and let, let, let me show you what is going to happen. What is going to happen? Let me close this Excel file here. These exception records, set this as the next stage get the data, load the data to the queue. Oh, pending items, no pending items, and now get the data. Get Excel data, first we are checking if there are pending items or not. Since there are no pending items in the queue, we have already seen, right, our queue, all the records are completed, either completed or in exception state. Now we are going to load the data into the queue. So after loading the data into the queue, I'll come back here, refresh your process and see. Did you get the pending records here? Now we are, have added the data again once again to this queue, to the queue. We have again added data to the queue. So this is the first record which you are going to process and this is the second record. Okay, now let us come and execute these records. The process is going to work on the first record. Get next item. Continue. We got the first record. Where is the first record? Item data. In this collection, we'll be having the first record here. Okay. 
we are going to create the order for the first record here. So once the order is created for the first record, what are we doing? After creating the order, we are immediately setting the data present in this item data to a new collection here in the reference number data. Right? We are setting it to this reference number data collection. Yes or no? Now similarly, we keep adding all the processed records to this collection. Okay. Now, in the second record, what are we supposed to do for the second record? For the second record, we are going to get the next item. And this is going to throw an exception here. You know that it is going to throw an exception here. The second record. Because after choosing the option and uh, minimize this one, you can see here this is going to throw the exception. Since there is no unit price value, you can see the business exception flag is true here. We are getting it as an output from this stage. Hope you remember how we define inputs and outputs. Now, this will throw an exception here. When it throws the exception, what is happening? Are we adding a record here? Are we adding a record? Are we adding that record to this collection? That record, which is under exception now, what will happen? It will see we are simply recovering that. We are getting the details. We are resuming the flow. We are marking the record as exception and simply we are going for get next item. So when you execute get next item, what will happen? We will lose the data here, right? Are we going to lose this item data? Yes or no? It will go and get the new record here automatically. Correct? Right? So what we do here? We add the same flow while marking the record as exception also. Or you can create a new collection and define it as exception, exception records, error records. You can say it as error records and update that data into a new sheet in the Excel file. Either way, whichever is comfortable for you. I want you guys to take it as an assignment, okay? Go ahead and take a new collection and store the records which are under exception into that collection and update these records to a new sheet. How are you going to update this into a new sheet? How are you going to do that? So while updating the reference numbers, right? While updating the reference numbers, you create the instance, you open the workbook, you show the workbook, right? After writing the processed data, after writing the reference numbers, after writing the reference numbers, what you can do here is go ahead and take one more action. Take one more action. Go to MS Excel VBO. Go to MS Excel VBO. Create a new sheet. If there is no sheet, if there is no worksheet available, create a new sheet. Provide the name here, provide the workbook name. Uh, this what uh, this worksheet name is going to be new sheet name. Provide the new sheet name. Okay. So in the output it will give you no no outputs here. Okay. Now the sheet name you provide the new name. Now once again take write collection action. In this write collection action, now you are supposed to write the error data into this new sheet. Understood. Yes, no, you want me to implement that? Or you will try to do that assignment. First thing, did you understand the requirement? I want you guys to gather all the records which are going to exception into a separate collection. Now, once you gather all the data into a separate collection, go to the Excel file. What you need to do? You have to update that Excel file into a new sheet. Into a new sheet. 
Let me delete this. You have to create a new sheet. Name the sheet as error records. Okay. In this, I have to see the records which are in exception state. Okay. Will you be able to do that? Yes or no? Try it. At least try it. If you're not able to do it, tomorrow I'll uh, let you know in the session. Okay. Try to do that. If you're not able to do that, I'll help you how to do that. Okay. And that is a good question, Sam. Okay. So for now, for now, what I'm going to do here is for now, for time being, I want to see all the records in the Excel file, right? For time being, I want to see all the records in the Excel file. So I am going to update it into the same sheet and same collection, but I want you guys to do it in a new collection. Okay. Take a new collection and update it. But now I'm going to do it in the same collection here. I'm not doing anything same two stages. I am linking them here. That's all I have copied and pasted these two stages and now I'm going to link it here. Mark the item as exception. Okay. Now, if you see, now if you continue, now if you continue, you see that record will be marked as exception while marking the record. Now we are setting it into the. Now you can see there will be a record with empty unit price and empty reference number. Since we don't have unit price value, the reference number is also empty. Okay. Clear. This is what I'm trying to do now. Okay. But what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to take a new collection, take a new collection here, name the collection as error records. Now, while setting the data, whichever the record comes to the exception state, whenever you get an exception, right, that record needs to be updated in the error, re error record collection. Here, you need to define as error record collection dot customer account number, error record collection dot product code. I'm also giving you all the hints. Okay. Now, once you update all of them, I want you guys to update this collection into a new sheet in the Excel file. How do you create a new sheet in the Excel file? You have the action. You take MS Excel VBO, go to uh, MS Excel VBO, take MS Excel VBO, select uh, create worksheet. Worksheet. It is a sheet new sheet right we are not creating new workbook we are creating a new sheet you can create a new sheet inside the key in, inside the create new sheet after creating the new sheet you have provided new name here provide a new name so exception details or whatever it may be provide a new name here okay so this will be your new sheet name in this sheet name you are supposed to write the collection and which collection you are supposed to write there? Which collection you are supposed to write? You are supposed to write the new collection which you have created here. This is the collection. Error data, whatever it may be. Any name. You can define your own name. It's up to you. Whatever the name you want to give to, you want to give to that collection, you can give that name. Okay. Now, while writing the collection, which collection you are going to pass? You are supposed to pass error data collection here into the collection. You are supposed to pass error data collection and reference number leave it like that because you need to update it from the first cell only, right? And sheet name, what should be the sheet name? Whatever the sheet that you are creating here, whatever the name you are providing here to create a new sheet, 
that should be your new sheet name this is going to be your new sheet name in this sheet you are going to update the data and you're going to save the workbook and close the instance what are we doing here we are just adding two actions that's all two actions and with these two actions we will be able to define our error records into a new sheet any questions I have you knew all the required hints here i have given you the whole solution also at least now i want you guys to implement it okay go to control panel is it control panel yeah go to control panel in control panel in control panel you will be able to see this uh, mail server here mail mail microsoft outlook profiles you will be able to see this sometimes you will be able to see mail 32 also if you are using 32 bit you can see 32 mail 32 so or you can see mail let me know once you are able to see this go to your control panel navigate to this uh, in your control panel if you are able to see only few icons right what you need to do so basically if you click as large icons you will come here and uh, you click on small icons okay you will get all the options sometimes in some control panels you can see only few options but when you click on these icons right view by small icons you'll get all the items here on this mail now once you are able to point out this mail click on the mail now you can configure a new email account to this you can configure a new email account to this okay click on show profiles currently there will be one default profile okay this will be my default because i have already configured it if for you it will be empty okay it will be empty for you it will be empty now click on add you just give the name as outlook capital o outlook case sensitive o should be capital define a new profile here so i will give another name i am going to say it as outlook new but you guys mention it as outlook just outlook because i have already created a profile and i have configured my email to that okay so when you are creating go for new profile provide this name click ok once you provide the profile name it will ask you to configure an email account to this now you can use your gmail account personal gmail account or you can create a new gmail account also you can create a new gmail account also what i recommend is go ahead and create a new gmail account because that will be having less number of emails in it okay that will be having less number of emails in it that's why go ahead and try to create a new gmail or if you want to use the same existing gmail which you have as your personal gmail box you can use that personal gmail account provide the name provide the gmail address type the password here type the password what are the gmail password which you are using you type the password here okay click on next after clicking on next you might get an error you might get an error okay you might get an error or it is taking some time to configure something like that okay in that scenario what you do you select your gmail id select your gmail id here go to the settings of that gmail settings where is the settings 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 one second or go to gmail go to gmail is it inside the settings i think so it is inside the settings only before you configure it here right before you configure your gmail account to the outlook you first come to this uh, gmail in the uh, chrome gmail inbox click on settings here
Click on settings and click on see all settings. And there you can find out this forwarding and pop up here. Not forwarding and pop up. Hey guys, I'm sorry. I think I have. Hey, sorry guys. Just uh, go to this account. Not uh, not to that internal settings. Come here. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for that. Okay. Come to your Gmail. In the Gmail, right? You can find this account settings. Account settings. Sorry. Go to your. Suppose to go for this account settings. Come to account settings. Inside this account settings, you can find security. Under security, under security, go for. Uh, yeah. Less secure apps access. Okay. Turn this on. Turn this on so that you can use this Gmail in Outlook. Okay. So that you will be able to access this Gmail in the Outlook. Turn this on. Okay. So once you turn this on, you will be able to configure your Gmail to the Outlook. Come back here. Once you turn it on, come back. And check if it is turned on. Turn on access. Sometimes it takes time. Yeah, updated. Now we got the pop up updated. Now you can come back. You can close this window. Okay. Now again go to the security and verify if it is updated or not. Security under security. Yeah, it is turned on now. Okay, so since uh, we are going to allow the access for the third party tools, right? For this Gmail account, that's the reason I said to create a dummy Gmail account, okay? If you are using a dummy Gmail, if you have any personal Gmail IDs which you don't use very frequently, then you can go ahead and directly configure it for your Outlook also. So once you do this, come back here, finish these steps, like adding a new profile, define your username, I mean your name, email address, and password of the Gmail account next 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 it will be configured and once you open the outlook you can see all in the inbox you'll get all the emails okay this is how you configure outlook in your system you can configure any email id to gmail uh, to this outlook account okay outlook is a server box mail server box outlook is a mail server box to which you can configure any account you can configure yahoo gmail you can configure outlook account anything i want you guys to configure any one account to this mail server box okay so that we are going to work on this ms outlook email vbo so once we are done with creation of the orders and all we are supposed to send an email to the uh, end user right so we are supposed to define that also for that reason you need to have outlook ready on your mission if you don't have outlook ready we have another option also to send emails okay to send the emails we can use another concept smtp and pop3 but whereas if we use ms outlook email vbo we'll be having more actions okay so that is the advantage we have it MS Outlook email VBO and coming to uh, SMTP and POP3, it will be having limited actions which can be performed. These are the two VBOs which will help us to send emails. Okay, MS Outlook email VBO and SMTP and POP3 VBO. So, what is this SMTP and POP3? 
it is simple mail transfer protocol okay so basically in this we will directly connect to the we will directly connect to the servers by using port numbers and server names so we will see all of them uh, these two uh, what to say like uh, vbos how to send an email and how to get an email using these two vbos okay is that clear so for that i want everyone of you to first go ahead and import those vbos into your blue prism if you have not yet done it i request you guys to go to c drive program files blue prism limited blue prism automate in the vbo folder you will find these two vbos which you need to import them ms excel ms outlook email vbo ms outlook email vbo and pop3 smtt these are the two vbos which will help you to send and get the emails okay so go ahead and do that i request you guys to go ahead and do that import them so i will also import them file import browse uh, i am in the right page ms outlook email Vivo just import okay. Similarly, import processor object browse SMTP. I mean pop three and SMTP. import browse and this outlook collection manipulation file management okay sql server import sql server also and let me import browse file management which is really important i'll tell you how we are going to use this file management what is the purpose of file management okay import uh 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 environment Collection manipulation and import collection manipulation. Next. 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 I think I have already imported that. That's the reason it asked me to overwrite. You see, it will ask me to overwrite, overwrite the existing one. Since I have already imported it, if you are importing once again the same object, it will ask you to overwrite it. Okay. So these are some of the VBOs which are important. So I have imported them and you can see them here under the default folder file management collection outlook email vbo email pop and smtp okay so i request you guys to import likewise all the vbos Okay, are you done?
guys your system configuration if you're facing issues with your system configuration uh i won't be able to help you in all the scenarios okay so you have to make ready with your systems so you have to be ready with your systems outlook if you are facing any configuration issues with outlook i'll help you if you are facing uh, i mean if you're not even able to launch outlook i won't be able to help you okay because i'm not sure what version you are using i'm not sure what voice you are using i'm not sure what is the outlook version if you are using any licensed version previously when you have bought the laptop did you register for some license something like that again i need to understand all those scenarios okay so i request you guys to go ahead and configure your outlooks okay from my end i am going to show you how to configure that from your end i request you guys to go ahead and configure it okay Are you guys are reporting to office or working from home? I think you know if you are working from home this whole week, right? Work from home, very good, nice. Very good. Okay, okay, guys, thank you. Okay, now okay. Now see this. Now see this. What I'm going to do now? I'm going to give a demo on VBO first for Optin and SMTP because most of you may not have Outlook immediately. I know you need to. Some of you might need to configure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So first, let me talk about SMTP for now. At least you guys will come to know how to send an emails, right? Okay. At least if one is working, that is fine. Anyone, this one or this one. Anyway, I'm going to teach this one also. Okay. You will be having the recording for you, and once you configure that, or once you get the system, you will be able to. I mean, you can be able to practice that. Okay. These are very simple, guys. So so far we have learned how to use the different objects. we have no we have created our own objects also now all the concepts which we are going to learn from now everything right we are going to utilize our vbos and perform them okay so from now we are going to utilize all our vbos and see how to use the use them okay now let us see if you want to send an email if you want to send an email how to send an email so for that we can use these vbos so we no need to A struggle to write a code or something like that. Okay, we already have the objects available. We are going to utilize these objects and see how are we going to create the. Sorry, how are we going to send the email? Okay, so for example, I am in this. Uh, uh, so assume that this is my mailbox. This is my inbox. Okay, this is my mailbox. Gmail. I want to send an email from this. I want to send an email from this. can some of you ping your uh, gmail id here at least i want two three ids i will send an email to your gmail ids from blue prism and i'm going to show you how are we going to send it okay okay i got one email id at least two more email ids yeah enough fine thank you enough guys i got three email ids sam venkatesh and rafal i received your email ids let me send email ids to your email id from gmail so to send that first i am going to first create a new process because first i am going to demonstrate how to use that vbo and we are going to use this vbo and we are going to send an email from our process okay so before that we will see how do we send the email from some other process okay so first of all let us let me give you a demo create the process name it as demo on smtp pop3 demo on smtp pop3 open the process automatically i am going to finish that it is now going to open the process
once the process is available drag and drop the action stage drag and drop the action stage simple directly drag and drop the action stage okay now choose smtp email pop3 and smtp email pop3 and smtp first you need to configure so here you can see the list of actions configure delete messages delete uh, delete message delete messages get messages list messages uh, save attachments send messages okay so first thing is configure it configure first what are we supposed to do we need to configure and see how are we going to send an email from this okay so to configure this you need to first define the username and password i will write my username and password in data items good practice go to the data items and this is my gmail right okay gmail underscore username this is my gmail username text data type i will enter my mail id over here this is my mail id i'm going to copy the mail id you need to enter along with gmail.com okay i'm taking gmail if you're using yahoo you need to know all these uh, inputs here since i know how can i get these details for gmail i'm using this one okay now here is the password i have to find my password for that now pass the username and password into those fields gmail username and then gmail password so my pop3 server what is the name of the pop3 server i will get my name of the pop3 server from these settings so previously i asked you to go to the settings right come here go to see all settings in the forwarding and pop3 <coughs> you can see configuration instructions here click on the configuration instructions so these are the configuration instructions here your pop3 server name is pop.gmail.com and put it in double quotes don't forget to put it in double quotes you can pass through the data items also if you want and for smtp this is your smtp server name <coughs> double quotes port number for pop3 it is 995 995 and port number for smtp it is 587 587 and uh, is it going to use ssl yes so i'm going to mention the flag as true you can see here required ssl yes here also requires authentication yes sorry sorry ssl required ssl yes <coughs> so we do provide these details okay now this will be our mailbox gmail will be our mailbox from this mailbox we are going to send an email no outputs we are just configuring here what is the first step to send an email first we need to configure first we need to configure so after configuring after configuring take one more action stage open the action stage select our object email pop three and smtp now choose the action to send a message once you configure you can perform all these actions sending the message getting the messages deleting the messages whatever you want okay so from from will be my email address so let me go get my email address once again from here so that is the reason i request you guys to put everything in the data items okay anyway i don't do it but i request you guys to do it okay so put everything in a data item if you put it in a data item it will be easy to reuse it again and again 
data items we can call them again and again right so this is like from and name it as text to data type pass from from mail so i'm going to pass my from mail input here and to to whom and all i'm going to send i will send it to i have some email ids here let me copy a couple of email ids from this insert the double quotes paste one email id and separate it with semicolon and paste another email id guys whoever mail id i am using here i request you guys to open your inbox and uh, keep waiting for this mail now subject i'm going to mention it as demo on smtp body i will write the body as test email please don't reply okay so body a html flag so if you define that in html tags you can define the data in html tags also here and when you define it in html tags you can make it as true if you want to attach something you can attach it through a collection here click okay you can send the attachments also now link all these stages once you link all the stages now i'm going to run this i'm going to start the flow just start the flow first it will configure it's executing this configure taking time i'm not sure if my password is correct if it is correct you will get email otherwise you will get an error the token on this is invalid please check if the case of your operation or versus Check that your function. Which 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 one? Did we miss double quotes at any place? I think so. Yes. Subject. See, you 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 will get this error. Okay. If you miss double quotes, now you will get this error. Remember that. See, syntax error. The token on is invalid. Please uh, check the case of your operators or versus or something like this okay we'll get that error message remember whenever you get the token message now check if you have defined double quotes for your inputs or not since we did not define in double quotes that is the reason it is throwing an error now continue do not execute code because invalid character was found in the mail header what is that semicolon is invalid okay if it says semicolon is invalid then is it semicolon or comma one second let me go to gmail once create a new mail where is my mailbox gmail 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 let me compose a mail and let me see how do i write these recipients here uh, how are they separated Okay, let me separate them by comma. One second, guys. Let me separate them by comma instead of uh, semicolon. Okay.
server has smooth was five points of authentication required. Okay, incorrect password. I think my password is incorrect. Let me change the password here. Mm. Okay, I need to check if this is going to work or not. Otherwise, I have to reset the password or use e different email. <clears throat> Yeah, now I'm able to send the email uh, to whom I have sent. Vankatesh, I guess. One is Vankatesh and one is Sam. Uh, please confirm if you have received emails from me. From mail ID, it is BP IOPEX, I think. From mail ID is uh, BP IOPEX123 at the rate gmail.com, I guess. Yeah. Did you receive that? And let me see my sent box. If I have sent the emails here, yes. You can see here, I have mail available in my sent box and I have sent this email to two people, Sam and Vangatesh, okay? This is how we'll be able to send the email. Similarly, if you want to attach something and send an email, you should be able to do it by attaching, okay, 